Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy, and welcome back to my channel dedicated to helping you advocate for your own health one topic at a time. I recently put a video up talking about my experience getting the Moderna vaccine, and that video generated lots of questions about side effects and risks, and I want to talk about both those things today. So if you want to hear what I have to say, just keep watching. So it's been about four days since I had my first shot in the two-part series of the Moderna vaccine, and I wanted to let you guys know about any side effects that I've been having, which I have had some. And then I want to address some of the questions that people have asked about concerns about the risks of these vaccines in general. My reason for wanting to talk particularly about any side effects is twofold. First of all, these vaccines are really new on the market and the clinical trials are relatively small, so we don't have a lot of information about that. And so it's not to scare people, but rather to put people at ease. I think it'd be really helpful if we had a lot of discussion going around this country and the world for that matter, amongst people who are receiving the vaccines about any side effects that they've been having. First of all, I think it can be of great comfort to people who get the vaccines later. And if they experience something that seems unusual or concerning, it's very comforting to know if other people have experienced that as well. That's not to say that if you experience something that you haven't heard of other people experiencing that it's a problem or anything wrong, but I still think that it can be very comforting to people to know somebody else experienced what they're experiencing. And I actually had that happen to me. So I want to talk about it for that reason. The second reason I think it's important to start talking about side effects from these vaccines has to do particularly with the messenger RNA vaccine and even more particularly with the Moderna. The Moderna is purported to cause a lot more reactogenicity. And I'm concerned that if people don't know what to expect, they're going to think that something is wrong when they experience certain side effects. Reactogenicity is normal. When it comes to the Moderna vaccine in particular, it's not concerning. However, it's very unpleasant. So I think it would just be really helpful for those of us who have had the vaccines to talk about what we've experienced. Now, granted, the reactogenicity, particularly with the Moderna, is much more profound on the second shot. So stay tuned. I'm planning to keep talking about this after I get my second injection. The bad news for me and the good news for anybody who is watching my channel is that it looks to me like on the bell curve of results. So if you give 100 people a vaccine, you're going to see a bell curve with some people having absolutely no side effects, some people having kind of a heavy side effect profile, and a lot of people all in between. I seem to be on that end of the bell curve where I experienced some reactogenicity. So I only had the first shot and I did not only have the pain in the arm that I talked about in the video after I had that first shot, but as the days went on a couple of days later, I experienced some axillary fullness, which is kind of in the underarm area. There was no swelling, but I would just describe it as axillary tenderness. It also ached a little bit back in the shoulder blade behind there. I suspect that this all has to do with the localized inflammation. I had the shot in this deltoid muscle on my right, and all of the symptoms I had were on the right, and I suspect it was just all in the lymph because that's sort of where the lymph is very congested, and the lymph system deals with all that inflammation. Now, fortunately, I did hear of at least one other person, I think two other people that had that same response that had some kind of axillary tenderness, and that gave me great comfort. So that's back to my first reason for wanting to talk about some of the side effects. So in my case, I had sort of a sequence of events in terms of side effects. The first day, as I had said, I had a sore arm that I noticed by that evening, just at the site. I was also really tired that evening. I had the vaccine in the morning, and by the evening, I was very tired. I woke up the next morning, the tiredness was gone, but the arm continued to get sore, and it was really quite sore that next day. Now, as that went away, I started to notice that feeling of fullness that was more in the axilla and really all the way down that arm. I was kind of achy in this arm and even the shoulder blade. I don't know how much of that was the vaccine itself or when something hurts, sometimes you tend to tense a muscle or hold something in a way that you don't normally do and then other muscles in the area start to ache. I don't know. Everything was on the side that I had received the shot. And the interesting thing was is that it went away like very abruptly. I heard that some people who were in the clinical trials that complained about some of the reactogenicity characterized it exactly the same way, that it just went away very abruptly. So I, that was really strange. Like all of a sudden it just felt better, uh, but I was happy it was a welcome change. Now, I do think that's kind of a lot for the first injection, so I'm getting geared up and I'll be pleasantly surprised if I don't have a lot of reactogenicity on the second injection. With Moderna on the second injection, it's not uncommon at all to feel flu-like, have a fever, chills, nausea, vomiting, so we'll see. 
Now, it is important to keep in mind that while you go through that, if you go through that, that it is not dangerous. Of course, if you have a fever that gets up over 102 or so, that might be dangerous. You'd want to call a provider. But overall, this reactogenicity, these side effects is that even border on adverse reaction are not dangerous. They're temporary, and it means that the shot is doing what it's supposed to. So that was about it for me as far as side effects were concerned on the first injection, and I seem to be pretty much back to normal. Now, I also want to talk about some of the concerns. I got a lot of response both in the Sandy's DIY Health Advocacy Facebook group, Facebook page, and here on YouTube, where people were asking about rare cases of complications possibly related to vaccines. People also asked me about my autoimmunity and my concerns about the autoimmunity as it went relate to the vaccine or whether the, the vaccine might aggravate some of that. And I've been concerned about that too. So I'm going to talk about those two things. Now, as far as a deeper dive into adverse reactions, anaphylactic reactions, and other untoward events related to vaccines, I am hoping to get an interview with a specialist in allergy immunology to talk to us and kind of put a finer point on that. So that's maybe for a later discussion. I did discuss with some people, both in the Facebook group and the Facebook page and elsewhere, about some of the newsworthy stories about people who had had possibly bad outcomes with the vaccine. Yeah, I worried about that too. I think everybody's worried about that, right? You read about these newsworthy stories. By the way, these cases are rare and that's why they're newsworthy. And of course they lend themselves to a whole lot of sensationalism. Now I'm not discounting them. If something goes wrong from a vaccine and it happens to you, you're a population of one out of one and that's 100%. I've really resigned myself to apply a more rational, logical approach to this vaccine, just for my own good. And I, I, I think we really all need to do that. Certainly have a discussion with your own practitioner because you have your own set of circumstances that you bring to the table. Now, I've said before in a discussion I had on this channel about vaccines, I'm going to link it right here. My view on vaccines is really quite nuanced. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I don't go out and get every single vaccine either. I don't get every single flu shot every year. And I am just have a very nuanced, guarded view about vaccines. I do have concerns about the adjuvants in a lot of vaccines. The adjuvants are meant to push the immune system and give it a boost to get it to do more of what it's already doing. And my concern, and not only mine, but that of lots of people, is that an adjuvant given to somebody who makes autoantibodies could possibly boost the production of the autoantibodies as well, and therefore aggravating or flaring autoimmune disease. Now, I don't think that everybody agrees on this. Some people say they have it well documented. I've certainly read good scientific work by people who have many more letters after their name than I do. And my own personal experience concerns me a lot in that regard. I do think there's something to that. And that's why I have a very nuanced view about what vaccines I'll take and how I'll take them. And as a matter of fact, as an aside, with the flu vaccine, I don't take it every single year. This year, I didn't take it. There is a flu vaccine, and I'm going to link it down below. It's called Afluria, and that's one that's made without any adjuvants. And I've had that one twice without any problems. That's an aside. So here's my thinking as it relates to the autoimmunity issue. And then I'm going to talk about my thinking, which is not so dissimilar, by the way, to that, about these adverse outcomes, these rare sensationalized events. There are two reasons that I felt very strongly that despite my autoimmunity and despite not having good data on how people with autoimmune issues respond with these vaccines, that I decided I was going to go ahead and get a COVID vaccine no matter what. First, the unequivocally devastating nature of COVID-19. It's not only the mortality rate. I'm not really worried that I would die if I got COVID. And I think there's way too much over-focus on the mortality rate. And therefore, since over 99% of people that get it survive, we shouldn't worry about it. The morbidity is far more concerning to me in some ways. It seems that the sequelae are all over the board. There's no way to tell. And one of the underpinnings of all the different sequelae with COVID-19 is inflammation. So even if you didn't have autoimmune disease that you knew of before, many people end up with autoimmunity issues after having contracted COVID. So for that reason, I felt like the discussion about autoimmunity was almost off the table. 
The second thing is that I have a lot of hope for these messenger RNA vaccines. Now, I know that's a dicey thing to say because they've not been out that long and people with autoimmune diseases weren't included in the clinical trials, although I do think a few were with Pfizer and they didn't during the time of the study notice any uptick in their autoimmune activity. So that was very comforting. The messenger RNA vaccines don't use any adjuvants. So I feel hopeful and cautiously optimistic that any uptick, even in autoimmune activity and inflammatory response, might just be part of the overall temporary inflammatory response that comes with the vaccine and would therefore be temporary. Now, of course, I don't have any data to back that up. That's my hope. I decided to take the vaccine anyway. Now, I'm going to let you guys know if I notice anything in terms of my own autoimmunity. I last had my blood drawn in December. My inflammatory markers are approaching zero. I'm not experiencing symptoms that I normally would in my hands in the way of swelling and stiffness. So in a way, this is a good time to have gotten the vaccine. I mean, not if it turns out that there's an uptick in my autoimmunity, <laughs> but it's a good time for me to have gotten it to at least have some anecdotal experience to share with people who are viewing my channel. So of course, I'm not gonna draw blood and look for inflammatory markers right now just because I got the vaccine. First of all, I don't think it'd be very helpful, even though I do have a really good baseline from December, but I, I think it's likely that there is some inflammation going on from the immune activity induced by this vaccine. As far as anything I've noticed, I have noticed that the Raynaud's that I have in my hand started to act up a little bit the days following the vaccine. It seems to be waning away. Now, if you have Raynaud syndrome, which is when your fingers turn blue or white, usually it's white with me, in response to you feeling cold, that comes and goes. Mine comes and goes. It's never completely gone into remission. And it's not something like you would find a lab marker. It's not like drawing your C-reactive protein or anything like that, but it is a kind of a non-specific marker. So if you see your Raynaud's is getting more active, even though your circumstances are the same and you're not in colder environments, that might tell you that there's a little more reactivity going on. So I did notice a little bit of that a couple of days following the vaccine. It seems to have gone back down to what it usually is, maybe not quite. So. I'm hopeful about that, but it's something that I'm just gonna to have to monitor. Now, I'll also give my very broad and general response to some of these newsworthy, rare, tragic, adverse outcomes with vaccines. I find it just as scary as the next person does to read an article about somebody who was perfectly healthy, had a vaccine, and then had some kind of an adverse outcome, ended up in an ICU with anaphylaxis, or worse yet, had some kind of another reaction and died. And I didn't doubt going into this that some of that was going to happen. First of all, not every adverse outcome that you see, like a sudden death days after a vaccine, is because of a vaccine. Timing might make it seem like it is, but I think we're going to have to wait until we have more data on some of these cases. As rare as they are, that might take a while. While I don't want to downplay the tragedy of events like this, the number of these outcomes has to be balanced against the number of tragic outcomes that we see from COVID-19. I know that sounds like a cold, rational approach, but it's the only approach to have when you make a decision. We all take risks. Uh, the risk of death in motor vehicle accidents, the chance that you're going to get into a motor vehicle accident on any given day is huge, but I don't not drive. When you choose to have any kind of an elective surgery, you're taking some risks. You might have a bad outcome. When it's just you and you're just one person, if you have one of those bad outcomes, the risk is 100%. It's one out of one. It's just you. But unfortunately, I think if you're going to apply that kind of a risk-benefit analysis to making your decisions, then you're really going to have to be consistent and do that with every decision you make across the board. So you'll have to decide you're never going to drive again, you're never going to cross the street again, you're never going to have any kind of surgery to correct anything because you might have a bad outcome from that. And, and by the way, all of those bad outcomes are far more likely than having one from a vaccine. So it's not that these don't scare me as well, they do. So somebody posted an article, for example, on the Sandy's DIY Health Advocacy Facebook group, Facebook page, I think it was, about a doctor in South Florida who developed some kind of a reaction about three days after having the vaccine. By the way, that kind of doesn't seem like it was to the vaccine. And a couple weeks later, he died. And yeah, I read those and I feel scared too. Of course I do. I worry. I worry about my friends, family, loved ones. I've had one shot. What's going to happen when I get the second shot? What I've decided to do 
at least just temporarily, is I won't discount those. If people want me to comment on them, I'll look at them. But I have decided that I'm just not going to internalize those too much because I think that an overfocus on those kinds of rare untoward events is not productive. So I've decided that I'm going to pick my risks. I don't want to get COVID. I think it's very likely that I'll have a far worse outcome if I get COVID than I will from the vaccine. I don't think I'm likely to die from a vaccine. I think it's more likely that I would have some other effect and maybe an uptick in my autoimmune activity. And if that's the case, I'm going to have it treated. That's all. I'll just have to work with it. I'll have to treat it and hope to knock it back down into a remission. And I say that because I think that's just the best option. So please, I don't mean don't put these on the Facebook page and the Facebook group. Please feel free to post articles, ask my opinion, ask other people's opinions. I'm open to any one of these discussions. But this is just the approach that I've decided is best for me. And of course, everybody has to make their own decisions. We all have to decide to do what's comfortable for ourselves. But I hope that maybe I can inspire people to adopt that philosophy because I don't have control over every article that the news media prints, but that doesn't mean I have to dive into every single one of these. I can decide that I'm going to sort of turn down the amplitude of that in my head because I've made a decision already and I have to be at peace with it. And my guess is that most people watching my channel have not yet had the opportunity to make this choice and decide whether to go ahead and have the vaccine. So I'm just hoping that as I talk more about my experience with it, it'll help you make your decision. Let me know if there's other things that might be helpful and let me know if this was helpful and if you have any other questions. And until next time, be well. Bye-bye.